Welcome to DP Tutorials by Donny Jarwa. In this teaching module, we will learn on one important term which is the electric flux. And in this teaching module, we will learn about the details and concepts pertaining and concerning to this electric flux. So, what is electric flux? Basically, electric flux is nothing but lines of force okay electric flux is nothing but lines of force so what are these lines of force what do these has to do with uh, electrostatics so when electric lines of force passes through a surface okay when they passes through the surface we want to study how much or how many number of electric lines of force crosses that surface so the surface in general it might be a regular surface or the surface might be irregular okay so when these lines of force passes through the surface that means we that quantity measures what that quantity is what is known as your flux so flux measures literally means the number of lines of force which passes or which crosses the surface and this electric flux is nothing but a scalar quantity. Okay? The electric flux is nothing but a scalar quantity as it measures only the amount or the quantity or the total number of lines of force which passes to the surface. Say, like for instance, okay, if I have any surface, okay, if I have this surface and if these blue uh, rays represent the electric lines of force so we will count we will have to know how many lines of force passes through and how many lines of force passes through how many lines of force passes through this surface so that is the physical meaning it is expressed mathematically by this letter phi this is called this is called as phi it is the line integral of the dot product of e and ds and with this n cam n cam expresses the unit vector so e is the electric field ds is the area element and n cam is the unit vector so this the definition and the mathematical expression is important from examination point of view so we will move on into the analysis of this problem say like for instance okay when uh, we have okay when we have the any surface let this uh, blue colored rays represent one the direction of the electric field lines which are moving in one direction we know that electric field is nothing but a vector quantity since it is a vector quantity all these arrowheads will represent the direction of the electric field now as i consider this surface suppose if i take this surface out and if i bring this surface uh, very near to this electric field you will find out that these electric lines of force causes to the surface and as i decrease this uh, surface that means you will find out that the number of electric field lines also is uh, the number of field lines also uh, changes with respect to the surface or the area in which you consider that particular surface and as i decrease okay if i vary by increasing or decreasing in this case i'm decreasing and in this case i am increasing as i increase the number as i increase the surface area you will count you can count that the number of field lines which crosses the surface area will be up to one two three and four four surface okay four uh, lines of force crosses the surface so as the num as the surface area increases or as the surface area decreases the number of electric lines of force which passes through that surface will change so the factor in which the electric lines of force uh, will vary that will uh, help you to determine the quantity which is known as your electric flux so, okay that will help you to determine the quantity which is known as your electric flux so in this case okay in this case let us replace this surface which is in the form of a rhombus and it is very very clear that this surface 
is inclined at a certain ang angle with respect to the direction of your electric field. So, now in this case, let the total area, the total area of all the surface be represented by the letter S. Suppose S is the area. And if I break this area into small, small segments, all these small, small segments will be equal to ds, ds, ds. Okay. That means if you take that means n times ds will be equal to what? It will be equal to the surface area s. Or you can uh, use another idea that s is equal to summation of ds. That means if you sum up all, over all those segments, that means that will give you one that will give you your total surface area. So now uh, moving into the details of that okay moving into the details of that we will we will i want to discuss with you what is the meaning of this area element okay what is this concept of area element see if i consider at the center okay if i consider at the center of this uh, surface that and let this center that the surface be having one a small element ds now if i want to find the area vector that means uh, the area element this is just the area ds is just the area big difference between ds when i say ds okay ds is nothing but the area area element area element and if i want since this area element it can be represented in terms of a vector so we can represent that area element in terms of a vector this ds bar is what is known as your area element vector area element vector so this area element vector let me take this red colored red colored vector okay let me take this red colored vector and yeah let me take this red colored vector and if i place this red colored vector over here that means it is evident that uh, it is evident that uh, this area element vector is pointing in another direction is pointing in another direction with respect to the direction of e say like for instance if i write over here what is this blue uh, red colored vector this red colored vector represents the area the vector of this area element so i will write this as ds bar now since it is a vector quantity you have to there will be also its respective unit vector so what will be the respective unit vector the respective unit vector will point in the direction of what in your direction of your ds bar i will take this yellow colored yellow dash vector and let this yellow dash vector points in the same direction in which ds bar is pointing so uh, taking this vector okay, taking this vector and pointing this vector in this direction so that will give you the direction of uh, end cap that means this end cap this end cap gives us the direction of our ds bar of our ds bar so in this case uh, or uh, in this case this ds bar and e makes an angle of theta with respect to the direction of e so that is why in order to determine flux okay in order to determine flux flux is written by phi this phi is the dot product okay? the dot product of the electric field vector okay e bar and your uh, area element vector which is your ds bar supported in order to find the direction of ds bar that means there is the unit vector n cap in order to find suppose this is the flux for only through the small surface if i want to find through the entire surface what do i have to do i have to take the integration and that's why we take the close integration of e dot ds and cap so that will give you what that will give you your total flux or e top which is your total flux so this uh, dot uh, this electric flux varies with the way in which the surface is being placed in the direction of the electric field now further emphasis okay, further emphasis suppose if i take uh, this surface okay? if i take this surface and let this surface will be in the direction of e okay? i take this surface and let this surface will be in the direction of e so uh, in the direction of e so this surface will be in the direction of e 
And if this surface is in the direction of E, it is very, very clear that if I take this element, this element, or if I take only the element from the center, or if I take only the element from the center, that means the area element, the area element vector will be in the direction pointing in the same with respect to pointing in the same with respect to E. All these will be all these blue curves will be in direction of your electric field. Uh, I take this ds, which is your area element. The area element vector, the area element vector, since this uh, surface, since this surface, since this surface is along, okay, I place this surface in the direction which is along the direction of E. So when that surface, when that surface is along the direction of E, it is very, very clear that this ds bar which is your area element ds bar is your area element that means this area element vector will be pointing in the same direction with respect to one with respect to e so i will take this area uh, i will take this red colored vector uh, this i will take this red colored uh, vector and then i will place this red colored vector in the direction which is same as e okay which is same as e so in this case Let me take this vector and I will place this vector in the direction of E. So when I place this vector in the direction of E, okay, when I place this vector in the direction of E, that means what will happen? This vector is acting on one. This vector is acting on the same direction. This vector is acting on the same direction. That means this red colored will be what? Will be your DS bar. This DS bar and E bar are in one, are in the same direction so when they are in the same direction it is very very clear that your one that uh, the angle theta will be how much that the angle theta will be equal to zero similarly i want to represent the direction of this ds bar then i will require one i will require a unit vector so this yellow colored uh, ray will represent one will represent our unit vector our unit vector and cap in this case in this case when the surface is along the direction of e certain uh, characteristics can be drawn that means e and ds bar points in the same direction or acts in the same direction points in the same direction when they points in the same direction when they point in the same direction, it means that the angle between them, the angle between them will be how much? The angle between them will be equal to, the angle between them will be equal to 0 degree. So, flux in this case, when the angle between them is equal to 0, this is equal to 0, that means the amount of electric lines of force which passes through the surface or the flux through the surface will be what? Will be maximum maximum flux can be achieved only if the surface is along the direction of the applied electric field and when e and ds are in the same direction such that such that what is the condition theta should be equal to zero more number of free lines will pass to the surface now theoretically you know theoretically that means if uh, e and ds okay if e and ds are in the same direction so if you walk out this rule that means if e and ds are in the same direction this is your flux phi that means e and ds you have to use dot for dot e bar dot d bar is equal to e ds and cos of one cos of the angle between them how much is the angle between them the angle is zero so when angle is zero you already know that the value of cos of 0 is how much? The value of cos of 0 is 1. So this will give you E and DS. So we'll, it will be 1. This will be 1. This will be maximum. Okay? This will be maximum for this case. Okay? For this case. This will be case 2. Okay? Case 1. Now for the case number 2. For case number 2, let, uh, let us consider the case in which the surface is perpendicular. The surface is perpendicular. So in this case, I have considered this rectangular 
uh, surface and I place this rectangular shape which is perpendicular to the surface. So in this case, let me take this surface which is the surface which is perpendicular to the direction of E bar. So when this surface is perpendicular to the direction of E bar, okay, let me write in a proper way. So when this surface, case number two, okay, case two, case two, and this case two will be a for the sur for surfaces for surface perpendicular to E. So when surface is perpendicular to E, it means that uh, this is the direction of E bar. And in order to find the direction of E, uh, in order to find your uh, perpendicular surface, so which means that if I consider any element, okay, if I consider any element ds bar, so this direction will be what will be perpendicular to E bar. So uh, this is your area element ds. In order to find the uh, area element vector, that means you have to have another vector. So I will take this vector, I will take this uh, red color vector, and I will place here. So that is your direction of one. That is your direction of your ds bar. So this red colored vector will represent one. Will represent ds bar. Then also uh, uh, the direction of your ds bar can be uh, represent vectorially. Vectorially, we are representing ds bar. In order to represent ds bar vectorially, we have to represent in terms of the unit vector L cap. So that will be your. Uh, this will be one. This will be your n cap. This is your n cap vector. Then the angle between them is how much? How much is this angle? The angle between ds and e. The angle between ds and e is equal to how much? 90 degree. So when the, it is equal to 90 degree, when the surface, when the surface is perpendicular to e, when the surface is perpendicular to e. Flux will be minimum. In this case, flux will be minimum. Flux will be minimum. In this case, flux will be minimum. Or no flux will pass through the surface. Let us work out. If it is minimum, in physics, we have to support whether, how is it minimum? Minimum will be 1. Minimum it is supposed to be 0. For maximum, we find out it is for maximum that it is 1 or it is like this. Then for minimum, we have to show, okay, we have to show why flux is minimum when the surface is perpendicular to E. So we can work out that, that means phi equal, phi equal E, ds bar, okay, E bar, ds bar. Then over here, this is your dot product, that means it is E, ds, okay, this will be E, ds and cos. When for this case, Theta is how much? 90 degrees. So you have to put over here. So you have to put over here 90 degree. Cos of 90 degree. When it is perpendicular, so theta will be how much? Theta will be equal to 90 degree. So put theta equal to 90 degree. You know that uh, values of uh, cos of 90 degree is how much? Cos of 90 degree will be equal to 0. So when cos is equal to 0, you simplify this one, you'll find out that the flux is how much? That the flux is equal to 0. So which means that uh, when the surface is perpendicular to the direction of E, when the surface is perpendicular to the direction of E, there will be no electric field lines or no electric flux, no electric flux, no electric flux. So uh, keep in mind that uh, in order to get maximum flux, the in order to get maximum flux, the surface should be along the direction of E, and keep in mind that. Uh, when we are dealing with electric flux, since it is the dot product, okay, since it is the dot product, we are taking, taking this point, it is the dot product of flux, phi is the dot product of E and ds. Since it is the dot product of E and ds, that means the angle, the angle theta should vary between 0 up to 90 degree, or it should vary from 0 up to 90 degree. So when it is true for this, value okay it is true for that value it should be acute in nature okay it should be acute in nature so some of the important conclusions from here electric flux is a scalar quantity remember that okay electric flux is a scalar quantity 
Why we say this is scalar quality? Because the number of flocks which first crosses, the number of flocks which first enter, the number of flocks which first enters is equal to the number of flocks which leaves. Okay? Is equal to the number of flocks which leaves. So that is why this is scalar quality. Then, moreover, the direction of E is governed by what? The direction of E is governed by the unit vector N K. And even from here, flux is equal to SI unit of, of flux is Newton meter square inverse. Why? It is like that. Because you know that phi equal E dot ds. What is the SI unit of area? It is 1. SI unit of area is meter square. Okay? SI unit of area is 1. Meter square. Okay? SI unit of area is meter square. What is SI unit of electric field? We know that electric field is one. Electric field is force per unit charge. What is force? Force is Newton. What is charge? Coulomb. So if you represent this one, that means phi. What is E? What is E? E will be Newton. So you have Newton. Then Coulomb divided by Coulomb, you have what? Coulomb inverse. Then meter square. So hence the unit will be Newton meter square inverse. And the very important point which we have to know is that the number of field lines. If more number of electric field lines crosses through the area, then the larger, the larger will be the magnitude of your electric flux. And also flux literally means lines of force. Review the rest of the explanation right from the beginning if you have confusion. Thank you.